Hey everybody, welcome to the Treasure Research with the Game Changer, Professor Wayne. We're going to try something a little different. We're going to be doing case studies with you guys. So I hope you enjoy these little cases. Here we go. Let's get started. So what's going on? All right, mates. It's, uh, I've been researching old camps. That was the theme of all this and for quite a while. And I'm going to take you through the process because I believe I have now located the camp that I was searching for. And I'm going to show you this as a case study using a few pictures, including a 1934 black and white aerial photo and aerial photos of the same location from Google Earth today. And the goal of this activity is for you to figure out what I was looking for in this old historic aerial photography. So here's Google Earth today. Um, this just shows you an area. I like when you have the labeling feature turned on. And the thing to note on here is Dayton Pond. This is a really key part of this. So keep that in mind, okay? The pond is pretty overgrown right now. And you can see there's not much left of it. But when you go back to 1934, the aerial map, this is what it looked like. This is Dayton Pond. And this is the river that runs through it. This is called the Pine River. Today, it's known as the Muddy River. But back in 1934, they called it the Pine River. And I want you to look at this photo. And what you're analyzing this photo for is to look and see if you can see a camp with this photo. And um, let me give you a little bit of history here. The history came in 1931 to 1936. So when I was looking up camps, this is what I was trying to do, is I was trying to find camps in Connecticut that were old. And I found this camp, it's called Camp Laurelwood. And one of the things on the description was the history. So I thought that was kind of cool. So I pulled it up and I read this and this is what piqued my interest. From 1931 to 1936, inspired by a Jewish camp in Massachusetts, Camp Laurelwood began as a day camp facility. But after 1936, the rapidly growing operation no longer fit its rented space along the Pine River in Northford, Connecticut. So when I saw that, I got pretty excited about this because now I knew in 1936, there was a camp on the Pine River in Northford, Connecticut. So this is the 1934 map. So if you picture that from before, you'll see all these little structures. Those aren't foundations. So LIDAR would not have helped here. This is a historic map of the campsite. Those are actual cabins. This is where the people stayed. And you see this larger building was probably the rec hall. And you can see like there's little roads or um, it looks like paths that went between the campsites and this major um, uh, building here, which was pretty cool. Well, what's funny was um, I had shown this to our Facebook group uh, the game changers. We're, we're made up of people from all over the world. And I asked them to analyze this photo because I think, you know, it's fun looking at photos and trying to figure things out. And when they saw this, they, uh, they said, oh, that looks pretty cool. It's kind of like um, in England, they're from the United Kingdom, like Stonehenge. Let's look like oh, Stonehenge going on. Well, this is the Connecticut version, okay? In the United States, we don't have Stonehenge, but we do have a campsite here. So I got pretty pumped when I saw this. Now, Looking at it a little bit further, Camp Laurelwood history, they went swimming here. So I know people went swimming, they went camping. Somebody had to lose something back in 1934. Well, the whole point of this case was just so you can do something similar in your area using photographs, historic maps, maybe current aerials, and look for changes that might be worth pursuing for other research. So this isn't about Camp Laurelwood. This is about making this application for yourself. And I hope that you got something out of it. It's a short one of my shorter videos. I'm usually known for like doing two to three hour talks, um, but this is just a short one to just give you a taste of what that research is all about. For me, the next step is gonna be to check the ownership, uh, get permission, maybe look for accessibility. I have found out that it's on public land, it's a land trust, uh, but it's surrounded by private property. So getting access to that old camp area uh, near Dayton Pond is gonna be a little bit of a challenge, but it's, it's the next step. But I hope you find it interesting and you see the power of using the old historic maps and photographs. I think it's pretty cool. Uh, if you're into this, uh, hit subscribe. If you'd like to see a collection of more treasure research cases, I'd love to do them for you. 
Um, or please consider joining our Treasure Hunter Game Changers. We just changed the name from Metal Detector to Treasure Hunter because we've got prospectors, we've got bottle hunters, we've got metal detectorists, we've got a little bit of everybody. When the common thread is that we're all into treasure. So check out the Facebook group, please. Game Changers, this is our new logo. Uh, we're really promoting it. We're trying to grow it. We can't grow without you. So thanks for your time. You know, coils to the sand and soil and uh, happy hunting out there and hope to see you again in maybe case study too. Uh, check out the other videos that I've got posted and um, hit, please hit subscribe if you're interested. It'll just encourage me to put more stuff out there. All right, take care. Thanks again.